Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the Savage Report. I'm Andy Savage. Here's a Savage Report fact check for you. The town of Jeans Island first tried to incorporate way back in 1993, then again in 2002, and then again in 2006, but the latest effort was again denied by the South Carolina Supreme Court back on June 20th. Joining us now is freelance reporter Charlie Morrison. Charlie Morrison is the one who covered the town for many years in the pages of the James Island Messenger and probably is the one responsible for bringing down the government of Mary Clark. Charlie, it's good to have you with us. Thanks for having me again, Andy. If the definition of insanity is to do the same thing over and over and over again, expecting a different result, are all those people out in James Island crazy? You know, I, I guess you could entertain that as a possibility. And I think that is entertained as a possibility from the outside. But, you know, living there for 10 years, now I'm going to be honest with you, I'm a Yankee, but I've been here 10 years and I've worked Wait, wait a minute now. Honesty, Yankee? Yeah, yeah. Does that yeah, go together? It does go together. I believe, right. be, believe it or not, there are anomalies out there and I happen to be one of them. But in 10 years living here and in three years covering this, I, uh, I've seen an evolution take place with both the people and, you know, the way it's manifested itself in these three towns. This effort, if it does go forth, and believe me, it will, the fourth effort to form a town, it's different from the predecessor, the third effort, and it, that being different from the second one, and so on. And each time they've tried to reform, it's grown, and they've grown a stronger case for making the town. And I think, personally, that each time that they've actually gotten the uh, statute passed and they've formed a town, they've done a little bit better as far as providing services and being the municipality people want them to be. Is that because of a change in management? Is it the new mayor who's really doing, and the buzz is they're doing a terrific job out there. Uh, do you find that? Yeah, you know, they are doing a terrific job. I think it's fair to say that the new management has been, been very, very good, and they've done a lot of good things. Now, I'm not going to say that the previous management didn't do a lot that led to this. Uh, a lot of the groundwork was laid by Mary Clark and her administration. Now, that being said, uh, these guys have really taken it and run with it. Uh, Public Works, kind of Councilman Carter McMillan and others have really uh, taken the lead on that. And, you know, ditches are getting clean. People are, uh, you know, their responses are being attended to. Uh, crime has been dealt with largely through the efforts of Councilman Karen Wilder Smalls, who's kind of spearheaded the uh, neighborhood watch efforts. Um, you know, zoning's been a little bit better. Just general town management has been better under Woolsey's administration, just organizing the town. And frankly, over the past seven or eight months, things have been getting done over there. Charlie, it sounds to me like you've changed your position. Last time you and I got together talking about the town of James Island, you weren't too big on it. Well, yeah, you know, uh, it's hard to get your, your real personal opinion in there when you're covering it so closely, but I, I, you know, I've often questioned whether, you know, as you question the mayor, whether there was a duplica duplication of services and whether it was, uh, you know, efficient or not. But, you know, in my years covering this thing, I've really come to appreciate the, the, the desire of these people for self-determination. I mean, these, these folks want their own government. They want to be a part of the decision-making process, and they don't feel that they're treated with reverence as they should in any bigger form of government, whether it be city or county. You know, what is the deal with Mayor Riley? What, 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 what it, it's, it almost seems personal with him and trying to put down the will of the people on James Island. What is his objection to the town? Is, is it political? Is it personal? Or is it meritorious? I, I think it's political. I think, really? he wants the, I think he wants the growth of the city of Charleston. I think there's a lot that James Island has to offer the city of Charleston if it was fully incorporated into the city. I think the tax dollars, obviously, we know go up. <laughs> what about the queen of James Island? You keep up with her? Mary Clark? Yeah. Just, what, what is she doing these days? Well, she's got a number of side projects. Uh, she actually put down her uh, history studies to pick up the civic activity that she did back in the uh, 90s and 2000s there. And I do keep up with her, despite you know a lot of people's opinion that we are continually at odds with one another. We're, well, uh, you disagree with her on some of the decisions she made, but you have been a big supporter of hers all the way through. Well, you know, supporter is one word I wouldn't quite use, but I'm, I'm a fan of hers. I find her interesting. I find her a nice woman. Now, her methods and her actions have been oftentimes doubtful. 
But, but did you keep up? You're the one who started. So did yeah. you keep up with the criminal investigation? Yeah, I did. You know, I, I mean, you had a self-interest in that, and, and I don't mean that personally, but you had a self-interest for your position in informing the public of what was going on yeah. out there. Yeah. And, and I know that she was under a lot of scrutiny by uh, law enforcement. She's been cleared. Yeah. Well, but if, <laughs> we must had have a, been her attorney. It must have been her, her attorney. She she has a number of good ones that are friends of hers, but. You know, I kind of snickered throughout that whole thing, I, knowing what I knew about the entire situation. And, and yeah, there were some irregularities there. We're not going to make any bones about that. But uh, I didn't think they had much on her. I, no, because, I mean, Mary Clark, if anything, was never interested in herself. No. no it was sure. always to promote the town. Is that not true? It is true to, in my mind. But then again, this last decision she made to, to send the five $1,000 checks to her, the recently formed Sea Island Chamber of Commerce in which her daughter was the... Uh, well, that was a little yeah, fishy. You know, you it was know, against... Uh, it didn't strike me as normal marriage. Probably but, not Probably not a good idea. But overall, I think the woman's heart was in the right place. And, uh, you know, she's staying active on the island. You'll see her around. And uh, she, and, and she'll be leading the reincorporation in town number four? Yeah, I, I doubt that. I doubt that. She was pretty smitten, uh, not smitten, but uh, annoyed by the way this uh, this recent election went down. She believed she had the, the hearts and minds of James Islanders still, and I think she was a little disillusioned about, you know, the town's collective opinion of her leadership towards the end. And Charlie, the word is that she's going to make a comeback. She's coming back strong. She's going to reincorporate the town one more time, and she's <laughs> going to run again. Is that true? Uh, I'd be shocked. I would be shocked, but then again, you can never be shocked when it comes to Madam Mary Clark. Well, freelance reporter and our good friend, Charlie Morrison, thanks so much for stopping by. It's been a pleasure, Andy. Thanks for having me. Remember to vote on our online polls for James Islanders Do It Once Again and try to form the town for the fourth time. Or is it time to call it quits? You can vote at c2savagereport.com. That's our program for now, and thanks so much for joining us every week. We also need to thank the National Academy for Television Arts and Sciences for these two terrific Emmy Awards honoring the Savage Report for our work. We were the only Low Country station and the only Low Country program to receive these honors, and we couldn't have done it without our incredible staff. Executive producer and my good friend Dan Crossy, director Ellie Whitcomb, associate producer, my wife, Cheryl Savage, and program director Charlie Thompson at Comcast C2. Our general manager is Bill Watson and all the videographers, Jan Matto and Keenan Nelson. Here's to another great year ahead with the best television audience in the Lowcountry. Don't forget our sponsors either. Mr. Baker out there at Baker Motors and John and Linda Dirtbrishire down at Money Men. Thanks so much for all you do to help us. And thank you too for joining us. We'll see you next week.